Greetings, this is Nathan Allen, a staff writer and editor at Poets and Quants, and welcome to our one-on-one -on -one alumni series for the Center Court event. We've got a very awesome guest today that I'm excited to introduce you to. Her name is Erin Nash, and she's an associate brand manager at Metafast. So let's start with a little bit about your background. Um, you went to Colgate University mm -hmm. for undergrad, Yep. worked for five, six years, and then you yep. went to the Cary Business School at the Johns Hopkins University. Yep. So as far back as you want to go, what kind of interested you in studying business eventually and kind of the business world? And you can go back to whenever sure. you were a kid if you want, but whatever you think is relevant. Sure. Yeah, I think the initial seed came when I was in high school and all four years of high school, I participated in a program called Junior Achievement, which is a program where you got together with local high school students uh, once a week for several months and essentially built a business from the ground up. And you built a product, sold it, made a small paycheck in the end, which was really neat. Um, but during my time, I held various positions. Two of the years I was president, which I loved. So that's what really kind of sparked my initial interest in just wanting to work in corporate America. And did you have any business in your family background or anything like that? Or is this just something that kind of piqued your interest around that time? Just piqued my interest. I was very involved in student leadership organizations in high school. Uh, and that junior achievement was a unique opportunity because it was very uh, business focused, very, a lot of skill development. Great. And then next, next steps after undergrad, um, tell us a little bit about your early career and things you're working on. Yeah. So coming out of my undergrad experience at Colgate, I was very interested in consumer behavior, human behavior. Yeah, How do yeah. people think about their needs, make decisions about those needs, and then ultimately act upon them. And with a major in psychology, I was really interested in this idea as it applied to like the employee experience. So that played out in human resources in a company. And so that's why I pursued an HR uh, rotational position at AXA, a global financial services company, in order to really, you know, influence and understand and really influence, and understand the employee experience and help to create a really meaningful work environment. And uh, uh, after several years in that position, I learned a lot about human resources and how an organization kind of ticks and hums. And I, I felt a little bit unsatisfied because I felt really far from the customer. So the company I worked for delivered really meaningful financial resources to people in their most desperate times. And I wanted to feel close to that. I didn't feel like I was impacting the bottom line. And that's, I realized that was something I wanted. So uh, after leaving my position at AXA, that was really my kind of tick to say, I think I need to go get an MBA and really experience and think about the consumer or human behavior from a consumer side. So from a marketing side. And that's uh, what I utilized my MBA to is really switch my career path into marketing strategy. Yeah, I noticed on your LinkedIn profile at the beginning that you talked a little bit about some of this stuff, a little bit in depth or a LinkedIn profile about your interest in, um, you know, needs and what makes people tick. I'm wondering if you can go into any more detail about, um, first of all, what really made you interested in that and then how that led to you picking uh, the MBA and the Cary Business School. Sure. So growing up, I've always been someone who is really interested in like why people do what they do and sort of picking apart uh, kind of how people act and how they present themselves. And this really parlayed into like thinking about marketing uh, from a consumer lens of, you know, why do I need to buy this thing? What need am I satisfying by buying this thing? How is it going to make my life better? And then the business school element really brought in the, the, the provider side of that. So how do you, given what the consumer wants and needs, or perhaps doesn't know what they want yet, how do you develop a product or a service? How do you communicate it to them in a way that's differentiated and memorable and distinctive? And so at the time I had, and this to my business school experience, I moved from New York to Baltimore and I actually worked at Cary Business School as an assistant director on the career development team. 
So that was a, obviously a really unique window into understanding and really learning about the Cary Business School from a staff administrative perspective. In my role, I met with probably 100 students to talk about their career path in the consulting industry is where I focused. And so I really got to know very intimately a lot of students and their um, their hopes and their dreams and kind of what they were experiencing in class I was learning about. And so because of that uh, experience of talking directly with students all the time, I thought, hey, this is an awesome program and something I want to look into further. So uh, kind of in addition to that, what I noticed was just and was impressed by was the diversity of the student body at Cary Business School in terms of background experiences, but sort of, you know, home country, languages spoken, diversity of uh, like professional backgrounds. And so I wanted to be surrounded by that. I, I um, so, so that was kind of one big reason why I said, I, I really want to go to the business school, you know, also loved being in the DC Baltimore area, and Johns Hopkins is, of course, one of the biggest names in, in the DMV region. Uh, and also, uh, you know, another reason why I was able to go to Johns Hopkins Cary Business School was because I received a full ride. So that certainly at the time was a huge, I was a big motivator in my, in my reason to go there. Kind of in addition to that, too, uh, my, my last thing I'll say is that uh, the business school offers tons and tons of experiential learning opportunities, both in the local Baltimore community as well as globally. And that was really important to me uh, because uh, personally that's where I thrive in learning is actually kind of doing it live. And so uh, I was really attracted to that piece of the program. Yeah. Yeah. Super fascinating. Thanks for that answer. Um, so were you, and I'm sorry if I missed this, but were you considering the MBA before taking that position at uh, the business school? Is that something that you had thought of before then? Yes, it was. Uh, when I was in New York, I uh, took a in-person GMAT prep class through Manhattan Prep and then did the GMAT there and um, was definitely considering my MBA. I almost did the part-time program. I was really interested in doing that, the Flex MBA while I was working. But again, after meeting all these students, like hearing about the full-time experience as compared to the time experience, that's what pushed me over the edge and set and made me decide I'm gonna go ahead and apply for the full-time. At the time it was called Global MBA program. Right, and, and what were some of the things that the students said to you that made you change your mind about part-time versus full-time? That's a great question. So one thing, a couple things. One is that the full-time MBA students, like many other business schools, all take classes together several days a week. So there's certainly more of kind of a cohesive cohort feel, which is something I really desired in a program. And because the program is small, smaller, uh, my class is around 58, 59 people, you're really able to intimately get to know everyone, which again is something I was really interested in. Um, also, uh, you know, again, one of my favorite things about the program and something I heard about through students when I worked there was this program called Innovation for Humanity, which is was a kind of a flagship piece of the first year experience at Cary. And the Innovation for Humanity, or I for H for short, basically pair groups of students with international organizations to act as consultants and solve a business problem. So I traveled, ultimately when I was in the program in school, I traveled to Rwanda and was paired with an organization called Azizi Life, which supported local Rwandan, hundreds of local Rwandan artists uh, in providing kind of economic sustainability and development to their families. Uh, the company sort of marketed their crafts for a fair market price. And so what my team did was we uh, put together a new plan for their new office, uh, a new guest store, the manufacturing facility, a uh, hostel, uh, and then also a business plan for their hostel, how they could make money and continue to grow. We did a lot of quantitative and qualitative research um, so that was a really pivotal piece of my experience, you know, something I ultimately realized once I was a first year student. So in addition to the I for H program, another flagship piece of the experiential learning, uh, in your second year was a program called discovery to market or D2M for short. And that 
was the process of, again, being partnered with a local organization to help them commercialize technology that had been invented or designed. And so my group was paired with a company that had developed a cybersecurity product. And we, uh, for several months, to scour the cybersecurity industry, really understand product offerings, and then ultimately deliver to their executive team a proposal on how they could commercialize their product. So what market? To, to move into, how do you price the product? How do you position your product given who else is in the market? And so these are all things that I had absolutely no experience doing, but um, really thrived and, and loved those pieces. Yeah, yeah. And then jumping back, because um, I do want to talk a little bit more about your specific experience at the Cary Business School, but, but jumping back, mm-hmm. you had a very unique perspective into the school that many MBAs don't get in that you were actually talking with students as your yeah. job for a few months beforehand. Yeah. Um, and you already talked about how that impacted, you know, your decision in one way by going to full-time instead of part-time. I'm wondering what other things you learned about kind of the culture um, of the student population and of the school before actually starting. Um, just any things that kind of you learned from that experience. Yeah, I would say that some really valuable things I learned working there, which I was then able to leverage as a student, was around the the culture, around um, participating in student life, like the types of activities that went on, because I had a full scope and a full view of basically for a year, every major conference and event and speaker program that went on, I was able to as a student, draw connections that perhaps others weren't able to, which was really, yeah. really helpful. And then also, you know, unfair advantage, you know, since I had worked with many, many of the, the staff there that um, helped me kind of understand the different levels of, of kind of partnership that were on the admin side to sort of to uh, get things done and, and develop programs to support students. Yeah, yeah. And and so now jumping back into your specific experience, and I think you've already answered this question a little bit, but I, I want to go ahead and ask it uh, because I think Johns Hopkins, maybe because of the size of the school, it's not on as many people's radar. Um, mm-hmm. And I know you haven't gone to a, another business school, but um, you know, from what you've gathered from other MBAs, you know, and that sort of thing, what do you think sets the Johns Hopkins business school experience apart from other schools? I would say a couple of the things I've touched on already, but perhaps I'll share them in a different way. I would say is the intimacy and diversity of the student body. I really cannot emphasize that enough. And I was, I realized how special that was about the Cary Business School because I worked at Comcast during my summer internship between first and second year. And I was with people from all of the amazing programs at Columbia, Duke, uh, Wharton, like every top 10 school, you name it. I was intern doing internships with them. So you learn a lot about other programs by talking to those students. And I could tell by how people shared about their classroom experience and about Sort of, you know, outside things that they did that mine was special in that way, and that I was with a much more diverse group of students who were able to leverage different experiences, which made kind of a more rich classroom and project team and social experience than perhaps others were getting at their business schools. I would also say the experiential learning piece was by far and away at Cary. Um, something that differentiates it. Again, I'm kind of gaining this from conversations from students at other top business schools. The really <clears throat> focus on like immersive learning. I traveled to Rwanda with 25 people and we stayed in a hotel you know, together and did all of these really like really neat team bonding, you know, community building sorts of things, learning about another cultural, cross cultural connection. Um, and I hadn't heard of that anywhere else. And that focus, continued focus on the business with humanity in mind as part of that lens through which as a student at Cary, you think through how am I promoting the, the well-being of humanity through this company, through the products we're providing. Um, 
And I would say the other thing that makes it unique is the integration in the Baltimore community. Um, because of Cary Business School's association with you know, the, the wider Johns Hopkins University uh, campuses, the, the hospital, um, there are just a lot of kind of webs and fingers into the community as far as kind of volunteering, but also kind of incubators and, and accelerators that are in there, um, local organizations who do internships. It's very, very rich. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to ask is you started a new role um, just a few months ago. Um, how are some things that you've learned through your MBA experience already shown up? if at all, um, some, th some helpful things uh, that's impacted your, your early career now? So I was able to obtain this associate brand manager position, which I would have never been able to do without going to Johns Hopkins. I have a classic case of an MBA who's pivoting their career 180 degrees. And, you know, I gained some really like foundational marketing skills that anyone should have when they're going into a marketing strategy job. But even beyond that, like very technical skills, kind of learning the lingo and of finance and kind of high level executive, how you think about profit and loss. And, but also again, even higher level than that is really thinking critically about a business problem from all different sides and being understanding how to attack that. And also thinking kind of forward, you know, how are industries moving? How does, how are consumer trends changing? How, what is kind of international business? What is the scope of that? And so in all of those ways, it's like the way I think and how I'm doing my work and how I'm leveraging other people in my job and how I'm able to connect different pieces of data and, begin, and beginning to analyze them. That is all things I've learned during my MBA. Just one kind of fun example is I did an, uh, recently I was asked to do an analysis of, of a, of a publishing industry. And I, it was like, go time. Like I, I had, you know, all 10, I knew exactly what I needed to do. There wasn't a doubt in my mind of I'm not quite sure how to approach this, you know? And I even was, I literally thought back to like similar projects I had completed with classmates. Almost everything was group team-based in, in mm -hmm. at Cary. So you kind of think back, like, how did that classmate write? They were so good at, at writing. Or how did this, how would this classmate have dissected this data set? Like, I, I'm, I remember how they did it, so I'm going to do it now. I literally was, like, thinking like that, which I never would have thought I'd be able to do. But, um, yeah, it, it, it made my dream come true. Yeah, great. And then lastly, I want to ask... What advice do you have for future MBA applicants who are um, either starting the process or are into studying for the GMAT? Is now is this question in general, in general, in total, or for Cary Business School? I think just in general for the MBA applicant um, who's mm -hmm. thinking about applying to business school, um, one or two, or ten to fifteen. Yeah, I I think my first piece of advice is get in touch with the students who go to school there. I think a lot of times in admissions offices do a nice job of connecting prospective students with current students. But I would say, go out and find people on LinkedIn and reach out to them and ask them, are, are those people friendly? Do they reach back out to you? Do they set up a phone call with you? Like, how do they answer your questions? That will really give you a sense of the types of students who go there, what they're interested in, what your potential classmate, you know, could be like. So I would say do a lot of organic reaching out to current students. But even beyond that, I think it's also helpful to reach out to alumni because alumni have a different perspective and that they're able to share with you probably more detailed. This is what it's like to get a job after, you know, upon graduating. These are the skills and kind of vantage points I have now that I've had an education at this place. <clears throat> this is what my network is like now. So I think both of those are really important. And the second thing I'd recommend is, it sounds like a simple thing, but kind of going and visiting the city where you're going to go to school is a really crucial element of that because it could be that many of your part-time internships are come, going to come from that city or that place, you know, during the school year. Um, the local organizations you work with to do small consulting projects are going to be in that city. So uh, I would say that's important. Yeah, great. And thank you so much for your time. 
Uh, this was Aaron Nash of the Johns Hopkins Business School. Um, and <laughs> and I, my name is Nathan Allen, and uh, I'm an editor at Poets and Quants. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.